We gotta find him, B. Remember ZB7? You gotta be that Autobot again. Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at the story of Bumblebee's hammer. But before we jump into that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that lets you create a stunning and beautiful website, which you can use for your online presence. Whether that be an online blog talking about alien robots that turn into cars roaming the streets, to an official business, Squarespace has you covered. Squarespace is very user-friendly meaning you can make the website of your dreams with no coding experience whatsoever. I love how you can add your social media posts to your website, since it's a fast and efficient way for others to find you, along with the embedded video feature showing your videos right on the page. So if any of this interests you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you believe your website is ready, go to squarespace.com slash trans theories to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. And I want to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now moving back onto the question at hand, Bumblebee's hammer really came out of nowhere, showing up in a World War II flashback, which took place before the events of the five films. And it would not appear in four out of those five films, with it suddenly reappearing with no explanation in the fifth film, Transformers The Last Night, where it would be used to fight off Nemesis Prime. And when the battle ended, the hammer was never seen again. So that said, the questions on the table are, how Bumblebee got his hammer in the first place, why it did not show up in Transformers 1 through 4, but decided to reappear in 5, and what happened to it after he had his fight with Optimus. With that said, let's get to it. To answer the first question on how he got it, I would assume it was a secondary weapon during the Cybertronian Civil War. I say secondary since throughout the five Bay films, Bumblebee primarily used a long-range weapon. This is evident in the World War II flashback, since he used the guns first and then his hammer. A reason why it's likely he had his hammer during the war for Cybertron is because he had it during World War II. That's important since that's the earliest known time period that we know of Bumblebee being on Earth since Bumblebee was a member of the Devil's Brigade, a commando unit that formed in 1942 and is banded in 1944. With that said, it's safe to say that he came to Earth no later than 1942. And remember, the Bumblebee movie is a reboot, taking place in an entirely different universe, hence why in that movie Bumblebee landed in 1987. Another reason why it's evident Bumblebee most likely had his hammer during the war for Cybertron is because he's very skilled with it. This can be proven by watching how he fought Nemesis Prime. For example, when they're underwater, Bumblebee spins around before throwing his hammer at Prime. He does this to build up momentum, so when he throws the hammer, it will have a harder impact. And when the hammer hit Prime, it stunned him for a second. And remember, he did all this underwater. With that said, I think we can all agree that B's extremely skilled with his hammer, with his training stemming from the Civil War days. Now knowing how he got his hammer, let's move on to how he lost it. And the last time we ever saw it was when he broke the barricade and motioned the soldiers to fall in, which is where the World War II flashback ends. And we know for a fact Bumblebee did not have his hammer in Transformers 1 to 4. Since of all the fights he's been in over the years, he would have definitely used his hammer in at least one of them. So what happened to it? Well, my best explanation is that he gave it to Hot Rod, and here's why. As we know, Bumblebee and Hot Rod are brothers in arms, and were tasked with finding the Allspark on Earth. Eventually, the two somehow met up with Cogman and a young Sir Edmund Burden. Now, Edmund is part of the Order of the Witwickens, a group dedicated to hiding the existence of Transformers on Earth. And as we know, Hot Rod joined the Order, letting Bumblebee track down the Allspark on his own. I believe the two thought it was a good idea for Hot Rod to join the Order, since it would overall help in their goal on finding the Allspark, since if the Decepticons made a mess somewhere when trying to find it, the Order could easily cover it up. After the war ended in 1945, and not finding the Allspark in Europe, Bumblebee and Hot Rod decided to part ways, with Bumblebee traveling in North America to search for the Allspark, and of Hot Rod staying in England to be with the Order. But before B left, he gave Hot Rod his Warhammer as a farewell gift, since they both knew they would not see each other for a long time. And this theory would make the most amount of sense, because after that flashback we did not see the hammer again. And we know for a fact he did not have it on him during Transformers 1 the 4, so I think this would be the most likely scenario as to why he did not have it. But now I'm going to reinforce the giving away theory by explaining how he got it back. As we know, Bumblebee has his hammer back in the last night. But don't you think it's odd that he does not have it during two thirds of the film? He would especially have it during the town battle, because they were outnumbered 3 to 6. Only until he's in England is where he gets his hammer back. And you know what else he did while he was in England? He talked to Hot Rod. And sadly, we never got to see B and Hot Rod catch up after all those years on screen, with it only being implied due to their actions during and after the castle scene. I speculate while catching up. Hot Rod brought Bumblebee to an area of the castle where he stored his Warhammer, formally giving it back to him after all those years. Kind of similar to how Iron Man gave Captain America a shield back in Endgame. And since we know for a fact the two did catch up off screen, the giving away theory is the most likely answer to how he got it back. 
Now knowing how he got it back, what happened to the hammer after his fight with Optimus? Well, the last time we saw the hammer was when B threw it at Prime. And I originally thought it fell into the ocean to be lost forever, but the shot after debunks this. Since there is more than enough room for it to have landed somewhere, I believe Bumblebee reclaimed it after the judgment scene, where he would transform it into himself, like how Optimus did with his ion blaster out of his back. I come to this conclusion since it would make no sense for Bumblebee to leave his hammer behind, when he could easily get it back. As for why he did not use it in the final battle, since they were fighting in zero gravity, it would make more sense to fight with a ranged weapon instead of a close range one, since it would be way more accurate. Hence why Bumblebee did not use his hammer in the final battle. And just like that, that was the story of Bumblebee's hammer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot and keeps my channel running. So big fat thank you to you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like, Rain, because it helped the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.